Hey there, everybody. It's Mrs. Bashman, and I would like to go over your last project. So your last project is the mixed media project of choice. So you're going to be thinking outside of the box of paint and canvas for your last piece. So let's take a look at what mixed media really means. So mixed media is a description of any artwork that combines various traditional separate art media. For example, you could be working on canvas in paint, drawing, collage, chalk, glass, wire, and ink all at the same time. But that's just one example. There's tons of different ways that you can use mixed media. So let's take a look at just a few of them. You can add texture to your surface. So you can come out of the canvas or paper and get three dimensional with some sort of sculpting media. So this is artwork by uh, Jane Frank. Here she's using oil paint spackle which is the type of stuff that used to patch holes in the wall to give it some texture charred wood glass crushed graphite and um, collage on a canvas here is a piece by tanis alexis and this demonstrates how you can sew into or cut out of canvas or paper because canvas is a type of cloth so she uh, titled this Passing Me By, and it's acrylic paint on canvas with drawing. Here you see the little girl is drawn on a piece of paper and then cut out and applied to the canvas. The little dotted lines are drawn on with a uh, Sharpie, and then she has sewn felt pieces that she's attached to her canvas. You don't have to work on canvas at all, though. You can work on all kinds of different surfaces. So this piece by Michelle Keck is done on um, cardboard. And you notice how she has ripped off the, the upper surface of the cardboard to re reveal the corrugation below. Then she has applied different types of collage media. She has crossword puzzles from a newspaper. She has book pages, images from a magazine, things that she might have printed out off of the internet, old CDs that she has ad adhered to the surface here and written or painted on top of, tape, all kinds of stuff. Then she's unified this with a a brown color by watering down some paint and just kind of smushing it all over the place. So everything has this kind of antique look to it, except for this magazine of the girl down here below here and up there. It's really bright and vibrant and colorful. You don't even have to have a surface, a traditional surface like a canvas or a piece of paper. You can create something called an assemblage, which is similar to a sculpture, but something that you could hang up on the wall. So this piece by Susan Craig consists of a wrought iron frame. She's got some uh, mini canvas pieces on here, pearl string, gold leaf, broken cups. I mean, you could just, the list goes on and on. Driftwood, caution tape. Now the pieces that she does are, um, this is a, uh, it, it's a friendship um, like portrait. So the two women that you see here, the two faces up here at the top, all the objects in this assemblage have some sort of personal meaning to an event or you know something that has meaning to their particular friendship, which I think is really kind of neat. You can also create art that moves, something that's kinetic. Um, so you can think of things that hang from the ceiling and can uh, blow around like a, a wind chime wood or a mobile. You can also incorporate other media into it by incorporating things like books. Here you see a book that has been cut up to create this gorgeous looking, like almost like fur from the, the paper. You can incorporate pages onto your surface that you're working on and then draw and paint on top of them. You can incorporate technology by um, tearing apart old tech, like down here you see there's old cassette players and you know all kinds of wires and different pieces of things that have been broken up and applied to the surface. There's so many things that you can do. You can also think about painting on top of printed photographs. So here we have a piece by Valerie Trasati and Eliza Rizel, and here they have printed out color or black and white photography, and the one on the left by Valerie Trasati is using acrylic or oil paint painted straight onto the surface, and the one by Eliza Rizel is using Sharpie and watercolor to paint directly onto the photograph. Now it looks like she somehow eliminated the, the face because otherwise she wouldn't be able to get this white paper right here. So I'm not sure how she melded these two together. If she cut out watercolor paper and then applied it on top of the photograph or if she cut out the photograph and then applied it on top of the watercolor paper. But it'd be interesting to see how she got rid of the, the head or she could have photoshopped out the head and then printed out 
the, the image with the little like white spot where she was going to paint in there. Here with the oil and acrylic, that's thick enough that it would go right over the photograph without any kind of treatment. But Eliza Rizel over here on the right had to do something to get rid of the face because the watercolor is obviously too thin to cover it up. So just to review, here is a list of different steps that you could take to incorporate mixed media into your artwork. You can take a surface that's two-dimensional and make it more three-dimensional by having it come out of the, the canvas of the paper, become uh, a little bit more sculptural. You can add texture to your surface by using something other than paint or, or drawing media. You can add glass, wire, fibers, buttons, metal, what have you. You can sew into or cut up the surface that you're working on. You could also build up the surface in layers by applying different types of media and surfaces. You can create an assemblage. You can collect and assemble found objects into something that can hang on the wall. You can create kinetic art, something that moves or has um, moving parts. And the last thing that you could possibly do is artistically manipulate a printed photograph by drawing or painting on top of it. These, of course, are just a few ideas, and I'm gonna show you a couple of examples. Some possible materials that you can use as well. I gave you a bag that had a lot of stuff in it, some drawing paper, canvas paper, acetate paper, scratch board paper, and scratch art tools, paint and brushes. So you've got lots of materials from me that you can use, and whatever you don't use, I'll end up uh, getting back at the end, uh, especially my scratch art tools. Don't hang on to those. What you might have around the house, you could have magazines, wood, buttons, stickers, stones, you name it. There's tons of things that you could use as art materials that you normally wouldn't think of using as art materials. Okay, before we look at some of the examples, let's look at how this project is going to be graded. So your grading rubric is going to grade your project based on how well you use uh, what are more traditional art media on the surface of your choice? Subject matters wide open. It could be a person, it could be a landscape. You could interpret someone else's artwork that you found, or you could create something completely out of your head. So the subject matter and the t uh, two or more media that you choose and the surface are all up to you. Uh, it's going to be judged based on how well your media is used creatively to create a composition that's well thought out, carefully crafted, and engages the viewer especially since you only have four classes to complete this, you need to make sure that you're creating something that is a quality piece of work. Uh, it'll also going to be judged based on how well the craftsmanship is based on the type of media and tools that you're using. So if you're using paint, for example, how well are you applying paint to the surface of your choice? If you're using drawing, how well are you drawing? It's going to be graded based on how well it demonstrates effort to avoid or correct mistakes. Is it created on time? And have you done all of the necessary progress checks and uploaded those to Artsonia? So here you have the five different days that we're going to be using for this project as far as creating and grading. So uh, today, the 21st, you're going to upload an image of your chosen material. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, or no, not an image of your chosen material. You're gonna gather your chosen material and your chosen surfaces and any inspirational images that you might have. And then you're going to do a minimum of 30 minutes of work. You can do more than that. Um, most days we do a minimum of 50 minutes of work, but since you're gonna be doing a little bit of research, uh, I'll give you 30 minutes, a minimum of 30 minutes for today. So you're gonna take that progress check photo and upload it to Artsonia today. That's your first progress check for 10 points in the daily um, homework category. Then on the 23rd, you're going to do a minimum of 50 minutes of work and take a progress check photo and upload that. The same on the 27th and on the 29th. So you're going to do a minimum of three hours worth of work on this one piece. You can do more. That is just the minimum. The bare minimum that you can do is, is three hours of work, you know, 50, 50, 50, and then 30. The project is going to be due on May 1st. The last class day for seniors is the 29th, but I'm giving into the 1st of May to turn it in. So that's when you have to have your final project image photographed and uploaded to Artsonia. That'll be 100 points and it is a test grade. So here's some examples from what some students have done. So the first image here is not done on a flat surface. It's on a box, like a memory box. And she incorporated lace, uh, cloth, flowers, paper flowers, just all kinds of different things, pearls, stickers, uh, keys, what have you. 
And the one on the bottom right is done by Molly Snakenberg. And this is a piece created out of twigs, uh, beads, buttons, cut up uh, corn husks and flower petals. And it's just beautifully rendered. And what was really interesting with this piece is she took a photo of it when it was freshly done and then every day for a certain number of days until the flowers kind of crumbled. I liked this one because this is kind of halfway through the, uh, the, the flowers kind of curling up and, and darkening. And I really like the rich colors of this photograph. So I thought I'd incorporate that one into here. The top left here, we have four book pages and she has wrapped her surface in the printed out book pages and used watercolor to create these drips in the background and then used flattened and dried flowers to adhere to it. And it's this beautiful four set of, of pieces. This whole slide is like very botanical, I love it. Then the one on the right here was done in watercolor and Sharpie. Watercolor and Sharpie go really well together. And she has created a skull that looks like it has the same texture as a pineapple. It has a little pineapple, um, you know, like leafy parts coming out the top. It's fantastic. The one down here in the bottom is actually also done by Molly Snakenberg. This piece is done on scratchboard. I gave you a piece of scratchboard if you'd like to try this. It's covered in a black surface, but then you use a wood or metal um, tool to scratch away that black surface to reveal the white underneath. And then you can use. Um, watercolor paint or markers to color in those areas. So here she has done a sunflower sitting in a glass jar. It's really beautiful. The, these two pieces are done in different types of watercolor, acrylic paint, and Sharpie, as well as cut out magazine um, images and stamps. The one on the right is actually done on a uh, textbook page, which I thought was kind of fun. The piece here on the left is done on illustration board in ebony pencil black paint and then paper you can see the gold paper is collaged there on the right side the teardrops are hot glue that has been tinted a little bit gray using some graphite powder the piece on the right is done on a wood block the uh, image is a photograph that she has adhered to the surface of the wood block with mod podge then she put mod podge on top of it to make it really glossy she then applied the pearls those are all hand glued on the feathers are also hand glued as well as the, um, the little hair piece, the little pearl hair piece. The piece on the left is again watercolor and Sharpie. It's a very popular combination of painting and drawing media. It turns out really nice. The one on the right is a piece done on a, on a panel of plexiglass. So it's see-through. You can see how you can see the light through it. The blue uh, and green background is sponged on acrylic paint and the tree she did with plaster craft, which is really pretty. Here's a piece done on an old window. She had an old window that her dad had and she wanted to paint on it in acrylic paint. So again, it's see-through and a little bit interactive. It's really nice. The piece on the top left, I absolutely love because it was done using those paint brushes that y'all never like to clean and they get crusty and disgusting. So the paint brushes were glued to a canvas panel and then paint was splattered onto and painted on certain places. And then she also used like bits of lace to kind of create this pretty stencil. Then she applied different doodads and things that she found at, at Michael's to it. So it turned out really cool in the end. The one on the bottom right is like every kind of media you can imagine. You've got stippled uh, pen and ink areas. You've got colored pencil. You have um, tissue paper. She's got glass pieces over here on this side. She's got foam glitter board posted over here. I mean, all kinds of stuff. All right, so that is the end of the slideshow. So if I go back over here to our page over there, whoop, you will go to your classwork page for today and you're gonna have the mixed media project Google Doc attached it down here as well as this video. And this is the Google document. It goes over everything we just talked about, goes over your due dates, what's due each day, and the grading rubric as far as how your mixed media project is going to be graded. If you have any further questions, feel free to uh, send me an email or to come find me between 12 and 1 every day on my Zoom channel.